My dear, but there is a principle. That's Galileo Galilei, the father of a lot of things. Hi. Then Nicholas Copernicus, who proposed that the planets revolved around the sun instead of the Earth. Hello. Edmund Halley, who has the famous Halley's Comet named after him. Hello. Stephen Hawking, a world-renowned theoretical physicist with an incredible mind. Hello. And then we have Carl Sagan, the most famous American scientist of the 1980s. Hi. May I present Ptolemy, mathematician, astronomer, geographer, astrologer, and poet. Greetings. Hello. Hello. Wow, that's rather a lot of titles. Well, I have rather a lot of interests. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to know about the blood moon and what it means. Before I start on eclipses, do you remember how Earth orbits around the sun and how our solar system works? A little. I don't. This is our solar system. How many planets are there? Eight. Very good. As you can see, this is where we are, Earth. Third planet from the sun. Correct. To qualify as a planet, one of the requirements is that it must orbit a star. In this case, the sun. Orbit? Orbit simply refers to the path that an object in space takes around another one. What does this have to do with the eclipse? Well, during a total lunar eclipse, the Earth lies directly between the Sun and the Moon, causing the Earth to cast its shadow on the Moon. Now, you would think that the Moon would be thrown into darkness by Earth's shadow. However, Earth has an atmosphere, and the Sun's light that hits Earth bounces off to hit the Moon. But shouldn't the Moon be white? Earth's atmosphere is full of very tiny particles. When sun rays enter the atmosphere, they hit these tiny particles. Look here. You can see light is made up of different wavelengths. Oh, each wavelength has a different color. Yes, exactly. Red wavelengths are scattered less than the rest. Thus, upon reaching the moon, they make the moon red. So, Mr. Ptolemy, do other planets with moons experience lunar eclipses as well? Oh, well, yes! The planets with moons, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, do experience lunar eclipses. Jupiter has 69 moons, but only four are large enough to create a total eclipse. A triple eclipse happens on Jupiter one to two times every decade. Um, uh, Mr. Ptolemy, how do we photograph the eclipse? Aha! Let me get you the guy just for that. Hubble? Hubble? Where are you? Hubble! Down here! Ptolemy, old friend, you're completely blocking my line of sight. Couldn't wait for an introduction? I like to make an entrance. Edwin Hubble, pleased to meet you. Wait, Hubble? Like the telescope? Indeed. Oh, don't get too excited. He didn't invent it, though. Thanks. Thanks for that. It's true, no? It was named after me because I am known as the man who discovered the cosmos. Hmm, arguable. The Hubble telescope is still in operation today. Yes, it's a vital tool for the study of astronomy. It takes extremely high-resolution images, giving us a deep view into space and time. Mr. Hubble, my friends would like to find out the best ways to photograph a blood moon eclipse. Wait, are you saying we need something as powerful as the Hubble telescope to photograph the eclipse? Not at all. With a modern camera, one would need a 500mm to 2000mm lens to take dramatic close-ups of the eclipse. But I only have an 85mm lens. And that's okay, too. People take photos of eclipses with their smartphones all the time. It's absolutely doable. I tried just now to make my own zoom lens. It couldn't attach at all to the camera body or to my phone. You don't have to use a zoom lens. The eclipse is beautiful even from afar. The way it's viewed with the naked eye. What does that mean, Mr. Hubble? That means you shouldn't fret about your 85mm lens. 
You mean you think it'd still look okay? I think it would still look good. I know of somewhere we can go. Someone who actually, currently, lives in space. Lives in space? To watch more, subscribe to our YouTube channel.